<clears throat> excuse me all right so there you go so so now we got these two things so all I really want to do is drag this uh, shot of the image in here and you'll see that we really need some more space on here and I'm actually gonna go back to finder here and let's try to find the fake ad itself what's the design file um, so you'll see that that right now this girl she's kind of sitting off to the side and there's I need some black area up here and see so her legs are kind of getting you know fading off and that kind of stuff so this would be an example of this is kind of my, my mock-up sketch I mean it, right now it's the finished product but you know usually I'm, I'm working from a sketch this just as it illustrates it a lot better than, than any of my sketches would um, so I'm kind of working from this actual kind of sketch out to kind of replicate what I, what I want to do because this sketch is probably what I showed the client um, so we're gonna go back here and I have to move her over and I gotta kind of move her down and make sure everything kind of scaled proportionally I've got the phone kind of running across looks like it's pretty much close to her head and I've got the bottom of the phone kind of right at the bottom of her hips kind of idea um, then I need text down here so I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and I'm gonna move her over here like so and move her down and see what's happening is that I gotta add more canvas to this stuff and I'm gonna bring this guy up Oh, please go up. There we go. And I'm gonna name this, you know. And you'll see that some things aren't proportional right away, so actually I better scale this down. Kinda line that up. Using my free transform tool. And that's roughly kinda where I want it to go. So I gotta add some black. Well, that's great. A couple different ways to add black. Um, what I'm gonna do is I can actually go to the background layer, and you can add a fill layer. You can do whatever. Nice, quick, and dirty one is to actually sample, you know, an area around here. And I'm gonna go to my shape layer. I love shape layers, and I'm gonna draw just a big, huge black right in behind. Now it isn't perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do a layer mask well, I could do a layer mask either on this one and mask off some of this or I could do a layer mask on this one and mask off some of that so um, let's see what's the better option here uh, we're gonna take actually yeah we'll take this one here and what I'm gonna do is I actually have to make a nice blend on here because if I just do this you still may see a sharp black line because blacks are made up of different colors, so especially a rich black, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black when you convert to CMYK. Um, so I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna turn off this layer for now for reference, add a layer mask, get a big brush, make sure I got you know the opacity, I gotta bring her up to 100, and I'm just gonna kinda, you know, just kinda whiz around here just a little bit, just enough. And I might actually paint, you know, over here, then I'm going to go back and actually just kind of slowly brush in the areas that I know that I really need that are important. And I'm going to bring my opacity down, and that's going to allow me to make just a bit more of a nice, you know, feathered uh, approach, just so it blends a bit better. And I got to go in and kind of remove some of this. So you just want to get a nice, nice feathered edge. That way, when I turn this on, it's a nice seamless blend. It's it's a bit better. Um, and then once that's done, I'm actually going to merge this down. I'm gonna go down here, merge. Where is it? I actually got to turn on this guy. Well, that is interesting. Well, let me merge. Peculiar, peculiar. Well, we'll leave it for now. Um, I could group it and there we go. Merge the group. Um, so once that's done, everything's merged down and squashed flat. Now I've got some nice big canvas size to play with. And that's kind of what I'm looking for at the moment. And I do have some more canvas over here, and you see, you can see the the extent of this canvas. So it just kind of ends right there. Um, actually, what I might do, that's ah, fine. So I'm gonna move. This
this over a bit. Move that phone over like so. There we go. Okay, cool. So well, once you have this stuff set up, let's save it. Got to save it somewhere, right? So let's go to the desktop here. Let's go to master class. And this is where all the stuff is saved. So yes, OK. So once this is saved, we got to go in and we got to start adding some shine and sparkle to this thing. And um, so I'm going to go in here for right now. And let's see, we got to add some stuff to the phone. Um, so once we're going to do that, we're going to go to the phone itself. I got the shape layer going on. I'm going to actually modify everything inside the phone. I got to go back to my actual sketch just because I want to get some reference going on here. Um, and you can do a couple different things. Number one, we actually have to make a color adjustment to the to the actual exposure because right now you've got this nice black background. You've got some really high contrast. The phone itself looking a little gray. So we actually have to boost the uh, the contrast here and the and the um, the blacks. So we're going to go into our layer. We're going to add a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to go into levels clip it with my previous one and again talking about these levels imagine these levels as um, kinda like the equalizer or you know your the, the volume adjustments on your stereo the whites indicate the high notes you know that's your your squeaky clean you know makes your ears bleed kinda stuff the blacks indicate the bass so that's gonna give you the the punch and the midtones the midtones are kinda like spoken voice the singing contains all the the information um, the real information of, of the song. Um, so kind of think of it this way and that way and then you've got this nice little graph running around in here. This kind of tells you the amount of color information that there is in the different sections. So you can see in the white not much. In the midtones there's some. In the blacks there's a lot. And whenever you do any color infra uh, color adjustments you'll notice it defaults to this and usually the color, the, the histogram this thing is called, it's never to the very edge. But these guys here, the blacks, the whites are always run to the very edge. The least thing you want to do is take the white and drag it to so it lines up with the very beginning of that little bit of color information on, on the white end of the spectrum and take the black and line it up at least with, with the, the beginning. That way your colors have a better contrast ratio. In any, in any photograph there should be at least absolute black and there should be at least absolute white. Um, that's a good rule of thumb to go by. And the absolute black can be anywhere. You know, it doesn't have to be in the particular piece uh, fo uh, focal point of the image. It just has to be somewhere. Um, so what actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost these blacks a little bit more because I want a bit more contrast in here. And we're gonna make it the midtones going on. So that's a little. There we go. That looks good. So once that is done, I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm going to give uh, make a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna go to the brightness contrast. The brightness contrast. This just allows me to like boost the brightness of the whole image, and the contrast allows me to bring up the contrast value too. So I'm going to bring up, actually I'm going to bring up both of them. I'll bring this one up, and I'm going to bring up the contrast as well. And if I go back in here, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Now what I want to do is i got to get a little gloss going across here. And I can use my pen tool, I can use the brush, I can use really whatever I want. But I'm going to use the pen tool because it's just faster and easier for me. You can use the, the other one as well. But I'm going to go in here and I want to run this thing and I'm going to I'm going to make a nice contour around here. So this is my shine contour. And you'll see why I use the pen tool in a second because I can control and I'm going to follow the actual bumps roughly of this image and how wherever you put this contour is totally up to you the nice thing about having a pen tool is that I can adjust it if I don't really like it um, and this is relatively flat so I'm gonna maybe, oops run this right across like so and maybe kind of bump that over there like that and then I'm gonna kind of just chunk it out like this so this actually becomes my selection so well there's a couple different ways to do this this becomes my selection I can actually go in here and turn 